Gospels about the life of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus. The Muslim will, will, will affirm that a Christian should and can find that. The only problem is, is that with the current versions of the New Testament, that this is hidden with the theologian's point of view, the writer's point of view, camouflaged and all that, to the point that you make it very, very hard unless you are a, a true scholar and start searching for Jesus of history. Then you cannot unravel what the church had added and the doctrine that had been added. Now, you are, I'm sure that you are very much aware that there are very sincere, honest Christians, modern-day Christians within the last approximately 150 to 200 years that had been in constant search of Jesus of history versus the Christ of faith, and they are finding out that there are tremendous, tremendous difference between Jesus of history that they can verify historically of what he taught and between the Christ of faith that had been kind of, and I don't mean that as a disrespectful term, but invented by the church. Well, uh, just a very quick uh, comment, if I'm just a very quick one. I think uh, what uh, Dr. Woodbury said is quite uh, significant, and what other colleagues also have referred to, and I think we're coming to grips with one very s crucial area in our understanding, uh, the uh, question of writing a scripture for the sake of, for the purpose of explaining the nature and mission of Jesus as perceived by the writer who is not necessarily uh, infallible. And I think this is quite significant because once we reach that point, once we realize that this writing came after theological arguments have already started, I think the coloration of that writing, then it becomes a matter either of accepting by faith that those people wrote under divine inspiration which is very difficult to accept, really, in view of the fact that there are so, so many irreconcilable contradictions. We don't want to, to dwell on that. There are so many irreconcilable contradictions in both an Old New Testament, which does not indicate, really, a uh, confused Holy Spirit that's giving different information. But I think to conclude, really, I believe that a lot of time in Christianity there is talk about the religion about Jesus, not the religion of Jesus. The religion of Jesus, what he, he preached, the gospel, whether it's within oral tradition or written form, Muslims believe has been the same as taught by all of the prophets, which is Islam. But what happened that after him, when the theology beca began to develop, the religion of Jesus was transformed for hundreds of years into a religion about the person of Jesus. And this is the crux of the difference, really. I think uh, to respond to that, your actually making believe you have some source of information that inside source that you know what the religion of Jesus I is. I know. We do. Okay. I have. Well, you do. <laughs> I do. Okay, we'll you can assert that. Evening. Yes. You're permitted to assert that. We also can deny it because uh, we have some other material that we can confirm through thousands and thousands of manuscripts that go back even before the Quran was uh, 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 given. And even the Dead Sea Scrolls go back and, and uh, confirm the Old Testament. But let me get back to my illustration before, because it deals with a major issue. We don't want to be involved in, the question is not, uh, do some Bible scholars disagree with the, with the Bible, which you seem to be continually coming back to as your main source of confirmation, that there are some Christians who, who uh, find fault with parts of, or many parts of the Bible. Uh, getting away from our question is, is the Bible the word of God? And my illustration that I started off with was one about a statue. And you look at that statue, and any reasonable person looking at an all, really an all marble statue would say it's a marble statue, and not focus in on the mind of sandstone. And this is what I just want to read a paragraph here about the Bible. The textual evidence is testified to the authenticity of the Christian Bible. The book has over 1,200 pages, yet the only pa passages and variant readings found in it when put together, hardly fill a page. So you're talking about so many contradictions and as though you have all contradictions, all sandstone and no marble. We're talking about something, critical areas which hardly fit one page out of 1,200 pages. So it's, it's conveying a false impression to when you keep stressing these Christian scholars and all these massive contradictions, it is, it is disregarding the fact that the 99.9% the 
is uh, quite clear and uh, is harmonious and does not contradict okay. anything. Can, can, can one then ask you, what reference did you use to read about this? Sorry? Can I ask, what, is, what, what reference did you use? Well, I'll be glad to show this. It's, it's a book by John Gilchrist. Okay. It's called The Christian Witness to the Muslims. Okay. And you can get this from P.O. Box 1804, Benoni, in the Republic of South Africa. Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to I know to for my own knowledge. John John, no, no, no. That, that, please. That is from the, uh, please, I want campus to just crusade, crusade, right? Please. No, it's no. not Campus Crusade. No, no, no. It's please. Jesus to the Muslims. Please. Box 1804, Benoni. I appreciate your answer. I, I just okay. want to answer Box to the point now. Okay. Now, uh, Dr. Chatson, you're saying that we're only dwelling on the, the comments, uh, opinions, and conclusions of uh, unknown Christian scholars and no, making... Not unknown. I didn't say well, that. Well, or known. Now you're saying they are known, whatever, that their opinion do not really count. Now I want to bring you to the text. Okay. Uh, John said that he wrote the uh, Gospel of John for a purpose, to prove whatever, to get his own account. Luke said that he saw it fit for himself also to write. This is what he said in the beginning of uh, the Gospel according to Luke. <coughs> now, are you claiming that those writers, even assuming that they are real Luke and real John without discussion, are you saying that those people who wrote these Gospels, with all these statements they have o o by their own tongue made in the Gospel, saying, we are writing. Are you saying, no, it is not they are writing, it is that they are inspired? Is this your assertion? We're saying that inspiration is different. Our concept is different from yours. It's not, God does not have to give words one by one in order for something to be inspired. Ah. God can work so that a man inspired by God can be using poetry. He could use a genealogy. He can use any materials whatsoever. He could use uh, a pagan writer, if he wishes. Fine, but this and, being... And, and under the control and oversight of the Holy Spirit, he can produce a book which is true. What is the benefit of that control if that production, the product, under the control of the Holy Spirit, will carry again inconsistent, not only inconsistent, the 32 scholars who revised King James Version, uh, unlike what you suggest, it is 1%. It is only a tarnished spot on a big statue of marble. Unlike what you suggest, the 32 scholars, backed by 50 denominations of the Christian uh, scholars, they said in the introduction of the Revised Standard Version that they have found many, and they did not call it mistakes, many defects. And they called them, they were so many and so serious to call for revision. And not only that, but to give some examples, and I want to carry this point thoroughly because it is the core of our discussion tonight. See, I give you some examples in the book of John, Acts, and others. All what the uh, revisers revised, as Dr. Hassan pointed eloquently, it relates to one single issue. Was Jesus God or was he not? I quote this. In John 3.16, the word begotten is taken off. In Acts 3.13, instead of the word uh, the servant, uh, his servant Jesus, it says, glorified his son Jesus. In uh, Acts 3.26, the revisers corrected, and instead of saying his servant, it says his son Jesus. And if I read only Acts 3.26, and I read it very slowly, for people and yourself to reflect on it, you will see that people who even wrote the first initial translation of King James, they did not even mind what they are writing. Literally, I'm saying this, it's a charge. It is a responsibility. And the plaintiff of proof, as you said in the previous session, is on the claimant, not on us. Read uh, John uh, Acts 3.26. It says, unto you, fairest God, this is King James, unto you, fairest God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his inequities. If you can make a clear English sentence out of this, I give you ten dollars now. <laughs> the, revised, the revised standard version, because it's all I have anyway, the revised standard version says, God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first. Look at the structure, Dr. Woodbury, 
and others, to bless you in turning every one of you from 